ALCS 2004, a series so wild I couldn't ask for more. Down three zip against the evil empire, but Red Sox Nation never lost their fire. Losing four to three at the end of the eighth, and you could still see signs saying keep the faith. Backs against the wall, it was do or die. In the bottom of the ninth, yelling please get it tied. Praying for some magic and hoping for a hero, but it took a team effort taking down Mariano. Millar with the walk and then Roberts with the steal. When Miller drove him in, it was all so surreal. It went to extra innings. I was glued to the screen. Hearing name by name get called up by the late Carl Bean. What happened next would change my life and give me such a rush. In the bottom of the 12th, it was Poppy in the clutch. I had never been excited like I was right then. The ball went over Sheffield's head and soared into the pen. The joy of the fans, such a beautiful sight. And hearing Buck's call, we'll see you later tonight. Everything that followed, as they say, is history. The Sox won every game as if it came out of a movie. Who's your daddy chance at Pedro and Schilling's bloody sock? But neither of them rattled. They were solid as a rock. Everybody had a job. Everybody played a role. Mark Bellhorn hit a dinger bouncing off the pesky pole. But the one guy that stood out had a knack for the big moment. Without his timely hits, the dreaded curse would not be broken. It wasn't just the one he hit to walk off in Game 4, but all the ones that followed where he quickly changed the score. A guy that was so poised and can put us all at ease. I'm talking about my idol. He's the man, David Ortiz. To tell you what he meant, I gotta take you back a bit. Before the day the Sox and I became a perfect fit. You see, growing up in Montreal is where it began. Heading out to the Big O, a little Expos fan. I'd always run down by the dugout to the best spot I can find, just to catch a ball or two and maybe get one signed. I love to watch the games of the crowd they always drew, seeing everybody cheering, rocking white, red, and blue. Then time went by and things would change, I knew the end was near. All talks of relocation was so tough for me to hear. Remember breaking down and crying with my face in my hands, cause my heart felt as empty as the stadium stands. Always wishing and hoping that just maybe they would stay, but I was only 15 when my team went away. That same summer, on a trip with my family, we drove on up to Boston and we toured around the city. There's a lot about that trip that I will always remember, like the first time I laid my eyes on that green monster. Everything about the place gave off a warm feeling. The love and passion of the fans was just what I was missing. I got my first cap with that red B on it. I never would have thought they'd later fill up my closet. After we got home, I kept on following their games. When the playoffs came around, I knew I'd never be the same. They won it all and I got so obsessed with the team and now everything I had was in a Red Sox theme. I was feeling so down over the team that I adored, but a lot had turned around and my passion was restored. The Expos will always be in my heart, but I left my heart at Fenway Park. From the start of this journey, the Sox filled the space, and to me the whole time, Big Poppy was the face. It's important for a kid to have a hero to look up to, and for me he was that guy. I followed everything he'd do. Counting up the home runs till he got to 500, every single one exciting, and it never got redundant. I always wished to meet him, but it proved to be so hard that in 2016 he came to my backyard. A preseason game at the Big O in Montreal, I couldn't be more glad it was the Sox after all. Just like as a kid to the dugouts where I ran, holding up a sign for Poppy saying I'm his biggest fan. He turned around and saw it and he gave me a wave. Then he picked up a few balls and he tossed them my way. That's the closest that I got, but it meant a whole lot. I have a ton of stuff, but that topped anything I bought. As the season winded down and we knew he would retire, the numbers he put up gave us so much to admire. A farewell tour for one of the team's all-time biggest leaders. At his final curtain call, I was sitting in the bleachers. He really made his mark and he left us wanting more, and never will we see another number 34. In my generation, he's the best I've ever seen. I will never forget 0407 and 13. He's out of the game, but the memories will stay. Happy trails, Big Poppy. Hope to meet you someday.